might not have time for that after knight c5, so something simple, I think. Try to try to keep everything consolidated without making any making too many weaknesses here. Just a simple move, king b2. Um, not trying anything fancy because I'm kind of low on time. Um, he's going after my f2 pawn. Um, I'm willing to trade queens here because it will make it a lot less complicated for me. So I don't want him to uh, try to attack me when I'm so low on time. So a possible move for him here would be knight takes h5. Um, he wins a pawn, but I don't know. Seems pretty greedy. I like it when people are excessively greedy with me because um, it ends up being to my favor when I get uh, a ton of development going. Um, so now I think rook takes is the best option. Keep my pawns connected and also try to um, double up later on. So as you can see, he's trying to take control of some squares here. Um, D3 is under big threat here. So I think the best option would be trade and then knight E5, which would both hit G7 and defend the D3 square. Um, oh, he's also coming in here. So maybe something even simpler like king C3 to defend all that. So now, now my king's defending both uh, D3 and D2, so I can come bring my knight to knight e5. Okay, so he brought his knight back to d7. Um, not exactly sure what, what he's planning to do with that knight. Um, I still have to main, maintain control over the d-file here. I don't necessarily want to put my rook there because, yeah, it puts him in a pin temporarily, but after king c7, he's out of the pin right away. Um, I can't bring my knight to e5 because I don't want to trade it. Um, although if I do trade, my rook can take, and then my knight is free to move again with like 94, 92 because uh, my h4 pawn like I said before is kinda hanging so I'm just gonna try to prevent him from uh, maneuvering his knight anymore so I'm gonna play b4 to prevent him from coming back to c5 um, I'm not sure who's winning here I, he has a king side majority which is slightly better than my queen side majority um, my king is just a little bit more active but his rook is much more active So. Um, I think probably the best plan for me would be get down to some kind of rook ending because um, that will be my easiest way to draw um, also figure out, if I can figure out a way to defend my h pawn I can maneuver my knights and possibly get into e5 again but like I said my g3 knight's like four, four moves away from getting into e5 so um, I think I think trading knights here is not a bad option, um, simply because it frees up my g3 knight. That's the only thing that's really causing me problems in my position right now. So as expected, he's going to try to activate his rook. Um, so if I maneuver my knight now, he can win, a, win some pawns, and that's no good. So I'll just go back uh, rookie 2. I don't think a knight ending would be very bad for me either. Um, simply because my king is already pretty active and that's really kind of the deciding factor in most of these end games is the king so um, I'm just going to play f3 it's a good move it defends my g2 pawn and it also restricts his knight restricts his knight on uh, from coming to e4 or g4 <coughs> okay so I think he's just I don't know exactly what he's trying to do I think he's trying to cause me to flag because I am low on time, but um, not sure. Because these type of positions for me are fairly easy to play. Um, because um, moves are going to be sensible and not necessarily crazy and require a lot of calculations. It's possible I might end up drawing this game or losing this game on time or something, but um, I don't know. We'll just have to wait for it and see what pans out. See if he tries anything crazy. But as far as I can tell, he seems to be playing pretty conservative and doesn't seem to be the type of player that would go all out to try to win a position. Especially one that is not um, obviously winnable if there was some crazy idea or plan. Uh, I'm kind of formulating a plan in my mind now, just trying to 
advance my pawns here. Because it's my majority, and it's easier for me to uh, advance it. Well, it's a majority, so you got to push your majority. So, we're pretty much playing a game of tag here. Um, okay, he won a pawn here, but that's okay, because it's a rook ending now. And rook endings are the most drawn um, endings of them all. So my plan is simply to push my majority, um, try to drive his king back. So I don't really have time to be um, worrying about the audio problems because I'm so low on time, so I'm not going to be stopping, stopping it again. So This is actually probably a draw right here because he can't really make progress without losing some sort of pawns. So. So I offered him a draw here just because um, if he plays king c7 here, uh, it's a forced draw. Uh, if he doesn't play king c7, then I'm going to rook check him, and he's going to be almost in a problem because his king is going to be cut off because it, it's going to have to go back to the 8th the rank. And, like, okay, so he plays rook f5, and now his king is stuck on the 8th. If he takes with the rook, his f-pawn will hang, and he's no longer really winning per se. Um, now my king is very active and he's going to be in big trouble. He just lost his pawn here. C pawn. So now he, he might actually be in big trouble because I'm going to be threatening all kinds of checkmates. So it's kind of funny how quickly an ending can turn. Um, he went from winning an H pawn to be being completely passive with his king and his rook is kind of stuck on that F file there. Um, he's not going to have many options here as far as um, rook checks. Maybe rook F4 um, to try to rook C4 check me. But um, it's not going to be very kind to him. Oh, he okay, he did a rook, F, rook F6 check. I didn't see that one. But that's okay. I'm still going to... Um, his pawns are pretty loose now. So I should be able to should be able to pick up some pawns now. My rook is uh, very active compared to his, and that's really what makes the difference in a rook in him. Not sure if that move is any good for him. So now I'm threatening his e pawn. If he plays rook e6, I'll just play rook takes f7. Um, so he's going for my h pawn for or my f pawn for some reason well I gotta figure out a good way to respond to that because that's a pretty good move I, I'm kind of forced to take and I think here I'm just going to um, hmm So he's going to be up a pawn here, which is no good. Don't think I can force my pawn to queen. He's going to win my h pawn. I don't know. I'm, I think I might be actually losing here now. It's funny how quickly an you can turn and how I was just saying that just a little while ago. So... I should get just a little bit of conversation here. I guess I win his F pawn, which is good. Um, so this is probably a draw here, so. Now that I'm behind his pass pawn, he's going to have less options as far as um, queening and moving his rook around. So, in a rook ending, the goal is to make him as passive as possible. Um, this is definitely going to be a draw because I really don't have any way to advance. All I can really do is threaten checkmate back off when he checks me. So I'm going to just keep offering him draws I suppose. If there isn't any progress that either one of us can make he can just keep checking me and now it's a draw. Anyway um, I hope that helped out some people. Just try to keep your rooks active in rook endings. Um, 
even when you're down a pawn in a rook engine, it's very important to keep your rooks active and your king.